Hey ladies, this is Lisa Shaw with lisashawcares.com. So excited to bring you Conversations of Care. And I have invited on today one of my dear friends, Dr. Jennifer Bennett. Welcome, Jen. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here and to see you. I just, I'm so grateful, Lisa. So grateful for you. Thank you, sweetie. It's good to see you too. And thanks for being a part of this Conversations of Care. We're in, um, some call it uncharted territory, uh, difficult, challenging, uh, for many, very frightening. Um, there have been so many changes that we're all experiencing and each person and each home and each business and each ministry and so forth is experiencing different things. And so I wanted to ask you to share with the community of women that will watch this video, as women of faith, how are you walking through this difficult time? How are you leaning into God? And what's, what is he putting on your heart for during this time? Yeah, that's a great question, Lisa. And I just, goodness, I, if I think back to a month ago when all of this craziness really started to happen. I'm in North Carolina. I work in higher education and, you know, our students were gone for spring break and the question was roaming like, well, what are we going to do? Are the students coming back to, you know, campus, this and that. If I think back to four weeks ago, life looks so different yes. today than what it was four weeks ago. And I have to tell you, I, in the four weeks that I've been now home, working from home, teaching my class online. My 10 year old son is here learning how to do online schooling for the time being. My husband is here. Our dog is here. Like we're all just here <laughs> full time. Um, I've really had to lean into God multiple times because I've had my good moments and I've had my low moments. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what I noticed for myself was um, and even prior to this, I was always a news girl. I like watching the news. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd watch Good Morning America. I'd come mm -hmm. home after work and I'd watch ABC Nightly News. And mm -hmm. before I knew it, I was like freaking out mm -hmm. about COVID-19. Yeah. Um, yeah. And really starting to worry and just be like, oh my gosh, is this it? What's going on? Yeah. And it was like God was telling me, Jen, number one, step away from the news. Uh -huh. Like you have got to stop watching the news so much. Step away from the news, Jen, okay. and lean into me yes. and my word. Um, and so that was one of the ways that I had to really start leaning into God mm -hmm. was by closing out all of this excess noise, not only the news on TV, but even on social media. Social media, yeah. Oh, girl, you know how it is. <laughs> you can get on there happy and leave like, whoa. Exactly. And everybody was sharing these like doom and gloom articles yeah. and how these healthy people in their 40s and I'm in my 40s and I feel like I'm healthy, we're dying and all of this. And I'd see that and it would just, mm -hmm. I would just start thinking about the worst things possible. Yeah. yeah. And I really had to make a choice to step away from the news, mm -hmm. to limit my time on social media, and instead to really lean into God, to lean into his word, yeah. uh, to lean into his, um, his music, worship music, yes. um, and really fill my heart, my home, my soul, my mind yes. with his things. And I will never forget for one day I felt led to just read about the plagues in Egypt. Yeah, Exodus. I like, yeah. yeah. I felt like, oh my gosh, I feel like we're kind of going through this. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was reading through it in the message, um, there were different parts that really stood out to me. And the, mm -hmm. the one of the main parts was how God continually protected the Israelites. Yes. And with from the plagues and just different things that were happening. And I was like, okay, God, I'm going to claim those promises yes. in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to claim those promises for my house mm -hmm. that 
no harm will come to us, right. that we will be protected mm -hmm. just like you did for the Israelites and that God, through all of this craziness, through all of the, this unknown, um, this unknown time, these unsettling times, yeah. that I can lean into you and yeah. I can trust you. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I came across your book the other day, be worth following. And I thought about how it came to my mind again, when you just talked about social media, uh, we all have a right to express ourselves the way we need to express ourselves. Yeah. But for me, I, I, I have to back up from it because, you know, I'm super sensitive to, uh, in the spirit realm. And so if I start taking all of it in all the time, my heart gets real heavy. Yeah. And, uh, but I thought about the prime opportunity that we have right now to be worth following. Yeah, absolutely. The opportunity as women who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to, to, in addition to sharing your fears and your worries and your concerns, to also share about him and talk about him and talk about right. how we see God in the, in the midst of this. And I know on, on your Facebook page, um, I see that as well. And that's so important because um, I think it's a natural reaction to fear. Yeah. And as you know, I wrote that book, No Fear, Fear Will Grip You or Grow mm -hmm. You. I, it's like running out of my office uh, to the mail. I was yeah. like, Ooh, I don't really want to go to the post office, you know, and now I can't, but, um, people are going to deal with fear. Yeah. We just are. Um, the question is how to walk through it. And I love that you brought up the plagues in book of Exodus. One of the scriptures that I grew up on Isaiah 26 and three, God has just been bringing that in the forefront that I keep in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me. Mm, yeah. And I think that is so critical right now because, you know, I'll sometimes I'll turn on Fox news for the update and then I'm like, okay, click. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, right. I'm going to click. I'm going to click. We don't, do, we don't do dials anymore. <laughs> I'm 54 years here. <sighs> so click. <laughs> if you're like one of my girlfriends, she does audio. You know, she has yeah. control. <laughs> I'm not there yet. But I, I immediately, I'm like, click, because yeah. I don't want to take in all the negativity while we pray. I want you to talk for a minute about that. How are you, not, not just for you and your family, but how are you praying for people during this difficult season? Yeah, so there was one night where I was like, just overcome with all of this. And I remember just laying there in the dark and just pleading to God um, to either take this virus, this evil COVID-19 mm -hmm. away and that somehow, some way he would come through and surprise the world with not as many deaths, not it not being around for as long mm -hmm. and ultimately praying that if any, if there's any good that can come out of this yeah. is that people would come to know the Lord. Yes. Um, you yeah. know, and I think, and one of the things that I've loved is that, you know, we can't meet in church in person, but you've got multiple churches online, online streaming yeah. their services. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I am loving seeing that because all of a sudden now, yeah, we're taking advantage yeah. of this tool that we have. And my hope is that we just continue to flood it with the gospel of Jesus Christ, the hope of Jesus Christ. And so that is my prayer is that through all of this, that people will come to know, um, that there is a God who is alive and well who oh, yeah. loves you and longs um, to be in relationship with you and that Absolutely. people would come to experience who he really is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absol mm -hmm. I agree with you 150%. I, I said to Peter um, over the course of these weeks, I said to him, you know, while there are some things that will go back to normal, uh, prayerfully, hopefully, mm -hmm. there are things that I, that I really hope don't go back to normal. Um, I think things that 
show up as complacency or mediocrity or apathy, um, lack of compassion. Um, and one of the other areas that I said to him was routine, routine that causes us not to pause and pray, not to pause and spend time with God. Right. That type of routine. I hope we don't go back to that as a people, as a, as right. a body of Christ. And I also hope that the, the, what I'll call the fire and intensity and zeal and spiritual fervor that I'm seeing of the church at large online, that we won't lose that. That's right. When we start going back into our, our little buildings. That's right. And as somebody who is a local church girl since I was a baby, but I'm also very much an outside the four walls person. And I just think that what we're seeing now, hopefully, will continue. Yeah. You know, minus the coronavirus, but the right. excitement and enthusiasm of not only talking about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but those who are listening mm -hmm. to those messages, that we will still have that hunger when their places to eat open back up and our activities resume and all of that, that we still, that we won't go back to just being, you know, doing more than yes. we need. Exactly. I so agree with that. And I feel like in my own life, yes. God has been reminding me again of what's really important in life. Mm -hmm. And in this time period, Lisa, I've been able to slow down and it's yeah. been a wonderful thing. Like our whole family has slowed down. And I think because we've slowed down and we're not going from one activity to another or this or that, Again, God has shown me, Jen, here's what's, here's what matters. Here's what's important. Yeah. Don't lose sight of this. Yes. When things, you know, get moving again. And so, yeah, I totally agree with you. Yes. And I think during this whole time, I mean, a lot of people have been talking on social media and I said this weeks ago, um, use this time to do this, to learn a new skill, this and that. For me, God's been like, no, Jen, just be. Just yeah, be, that's, that's what I want. Yeah. Don't do, just be mm -hmm. still and know that I'm God. And so, Amen. Amen. Yeah. So now also as a mom who now you're home, yeah, working from home and you have your son, how, how are you and your husband working that with Liam? It's, Honestly, it's been really good. So like the first, um, the first few weeks when he was here doing schoolwork things, and I was actually getting ready to do a post about this, but things were just kind of all over the place. Like, and Luke kind of took um, charge, thank God, of helping Liam with his online schooling because yeah. my husband's kind of like the expert with online education stuff. That's good. But it, we didn't really have a schedule or anything. It was just kind of all over the place. And so... I feel like this past Monday night, I finally got my act together because, you know, for the past three weeks, it's just been kind of, I don't know, trying to get used to this new normal for right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, and as someone who's very organized and scheduled, yeah. um, feeling a little lost through it all, but it wasn't until like three weeks into it that I finally sat down and put a schedule together. And so now we have a schedule. We all get up at a certain time we have breakfast and family devotions and then Luke yeah. Liam, and our dog go for a run while I vacuum the house and then awesome. we all start our work. So we now have a schedule in place, which has helped out tremendously. But my post that I was going to put up was encouraging women. Don't you dare feel guilty. If you don't feel like right now you have your act together, Excellent. if you feel like you're not super mom, if you yeah. still feel a little scattered brain, because this is all, this pandemic can be overwhelming mm -hmm. and it can take some of the strongest ones of us mm -hmm. and lead us into a place where we're just not used to being. Yeah. And for yeah. me, that I was just kind of like, okay, things are just kind of all over the place yeah. and they work for a while. And now three weeks, four weeks in, yeah. I'm finally getting my groove back. Yeah, that's awesome. I call it letting yourself off the hook. Recently, yeah. I was asked to write for uh, Dr. Shaniri for her, be one of the authors in a book that she's putting together for women. And my chapter, this is before the coronavirus, my chapter is titled uh, Let Yourself Off the Hook. 
Love that. I think a lot of times we, we walk with this, particularly how we're cultured, walk with the superwoman mentality. Yeah. And I said in the, in the chapter, the only S on my chest means surrender. I want to yeah. surrender to God. I'm not trying to be a superwoman. My, my hands and my heart are in a lot of areas. And, and that's why I'm intentional about the being, mm -hmm. being the church and not just doing. I, you know, I love organization uh, and I love doing the things I do, but I, I don't want to be consumed with activities. I don't like that because yeah. then it's the question of, are we just doing, are we just doing to do? Right. You yep. know, is there, is there really a need for it? And is there, is there something that, is there a, a benefit for it? And I like to say, I want God ordained ideas, not just good ideas. Because right. a good idea will exhaust the heck out of you. Whereas a <laughs> God ordained idea, you're operating on his grace. And so right. I love that you, that you're talking about that with the women, just basically letting yourself off the hook, not, not having to have everything everything checked off and everything done. One of the things that I, I don't like a dirty kitchen. Like I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just how it, it's probably how I was bred. you know, I did all the, the housework um, living at home. And so this was so many times I can walk past the sink and, and Peter and Adrian are dumping stuff because we're all working all day. And I'm just like, <laughs> right, exactly. I can relate to that. Like the dishwasher is right here. <laughs> so there's, but and I add to it too. But there's, but so much of that that I can take. Where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stop this and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna yeah. Clean the kitchen. And so just trying to work through those things and and be on a a healthy schedule together where we're we're not climbing all over right. each other to accomplish the things that we're accomplishing. So in the last minute or so that we have, Jim, tell the ladies how they can find you. I love drjenbennett.com. I pop in on your site. I love uh, what you have there. I love your heart, um, the direction that God took you uh, in, your, in your website updates and all. Uh, it definitely speaks to how you show up in the earth, the way that he uses you. So tell the ladies how, where and how they can find you. Yeah, if you um, want to learn more about who I am and connect with me, you can go to my website, Dr. Jen Bennett. It's D R and then J E N Bennett, B E N N E T T dot com, Dr. Jen Bennett dot com. And then if you want to connect with me, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm on really all of those platforms. And you can find me at Dr. Jen Bennett. Awesome. Um, and, for, and for women and men who want to learn how to uh, be worth following, just list your book and where they would find that. Yep, so you can find my book on my website. Um, and if you wanna just go straight to Amazon, you can go there too. You would just type in the search bar, hashtag the pound sign, and then the word be worth following as one word and my book would come right up. Awesome, I highly, highly, highly recommend Jim's book. It's wonderful. And if there ever was a time for the messaging of being worth following, it is right now. Yeah. It is right now. So great. Thank you, sweetie. I love Thank you. Thank you. Love you too. Thank you with us today. Take yeah. care. God bless. You too. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Bye-bye.